Hey there. Welcome to the last section of the course, Social VR Metaverse. In this section, we will learn about multiplayer networking, then learn to set up a simple scene, and then learn to add multiplayer network and multi-layer virtual reality. Now we move on to the first video of this section, Multiplayer Networking. In this video, we will learn about networking services, architecture, differences between local network and server, and finally learn about Unity networking system. For many people, the visceral experience of socially interacting live with other people in VR is at least as dramatic as the difference between using Facebook versus browsing a static website, or sharing Snapchats versus viewing an online photo album. It's very personal and alive. If you tried it out yourself, you know exactly what I mean. Now we're going to look at how social VR experiences can be implemented using Unity. There are many approaches, from building it from scratch to plugging into an existing VR world. Before we begin implementation, let's take a look at what multiplayer networking is all about and define some terms. First, we will learn networking services. Consider a situation where you are running a VR application that is connected to a server and several of your friends are running the same application on their own VR rigs at the same time. When you move your first-person view within the game, shoot things or otherwise interact with the virtual environment, you expect the other players to see that too. Their version of the game stays in sync with yours and vice versa. How does this work? Your game creates a connection to a server. Other players are simultaneously connected to the same service. When you move, your character's new position is broadcast to each of the other connections, which then updates your avatar's position in their own views. Similarly, when your game receives the changed position of another character, it is updated in your view. The faster, the better. That is, the less delay, latency, between the send and receive messages and the corresponding screen updates, the more live or real-time the interaction feels. Multiplayer services should help you manage the sharing of the game's state between all active clients. The spawning of new players and objects, security considerations, as well as the management of low-level networking connections, protocols, and the quality of service, such as data rate and performance. Networking is built as a series of layers, where the low-level layers deal with the details of the data transport and are agnostic to the content of the data. Middle and higher layers provide increasingly aggregated features that also may be more directly helpful for the networking application, in our case, multiplayer gaming and social VR. Ideally, the high-level layer will provide all you need to implement multiplayer features into your games with minimum custom scripting, while offering access to other layers through a clean API in case you have special requirements. There are a number of multiplayer services available, including Photon from Exit Games and other services from Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and more. The popular Photon Cloud service can be easily added using their free Photon Unity Networking pun package from the Unity Asset Store. For more information, visit this page. Unity 5 has its own built-in Unity networking system which was recently rewritten from scratch and greatly improved from what it was in Unity 4. Unity networking reduces the need for custom scripting and provides a feature-rich set of components and API that tightly integrates with Unity. The network architecture. The key to networking is the client-server system architecture. We see this all around us in today's world. Your web browser is a client and websites are hosted on a server. Your favorite music listening app is a client and its streaming service is a server. Similarly, each instance of your game when connected to a network is a client. It talks to a server which communicates the status and control information between all the other game clients. I say server, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a separate physical computer somewhere. It could be, but it's probably not. It's best to think of a client and server as processes instances of a program or an application running somewhere. A cloud server is a virtual process that is accessible via the internet as a service. 
A single app can sometimes act as both a client and a server at the same time. This latter case, where the server and client are one, is said to be running as a host. With Unity, networking games can be run as a client, a server, and or as a host. Even so, a public IP, Internet Protocol address, is needed for game instances to talk to one another. A lightweight relay server can provide this service with minimal resources. Next, we will learn about local versus server. In Unity, you can use scripting to create or instantiate new objects during gameplay. In a multiplayer situation, these objects need to be activated or spawned locally as well as on the network, so that all the clients will know about it. A spawning system manages objects across all the clients. It is important to make a distinction between objects that are local player objects versus the network ones. Local player objects are owned by you on your client. For example, in a first-person experience, your player's avatar will be spawned with a camera component, whereas the other player's avatars will not. It is also an important security consideration to prevent users from hacking a game and changing other players' characters. Local player objects have local authority. That is, the player's object is responsible for controlling itself, such as its own movement. Otherwise, when the creation, movement, and destruction of objects are not controlled by a player, the authority should reside on the server. On the other hand, server authority is needed. For example, when a game creates enemies at random locations, you'd want all the clients to get the same random locations. When a new player joins an ongoing game, the server helps create and set up objects that are active in the current gameplay. You wouldn't want an object to show up in its default position and then jump to a different current position as it's syncing with the other clients. The following image from Unity documentation shows ways in which actions are performed across the network. The server makes remote procedure calls, RPC, to the client to spawn or update objects. The client sends commands to the server to affect actions, which are then communicated to all the remote clients. Real-time networking is a deep engineering discipline. Layered network architectures aim to simplify and shield you from brutally arcane details. It all comes down to performance, security, and reliability. If you need to debug or optimize any of these in your multiplayer game, you may need to dig in your heels and work to gain a better understanding of what's going on under the hood. The Unity Networking System the Unity networking engine includes a robust set of high-level components, scripts, that makes it easy to add multiplayer capabilities to your games. Some of the more important components include network identity, network behavior, network transform, and network manager. The network identity component is required on each game object prefab that may be spawned, created, on clients. Internally, it provides a unique asset ID and other parameters so that objects can be unambiguously identified and spawned across the network. The Network Behavior class is derived from Mono Behavior and provides network functionality to scripts. Details of the same are documented at When you want to synchronize the movement of physics of objects, add a Network Transform component. It's like a shortcut. For the more general sync var variable synchronization with additional intelligent interpolation for smoother movement between updates. The network manager component is the glue that puts it all together. It handles the managing of connections, the spawning of objects across the network, and configuration. When new player objects are spawned, you can specify a spawn position in the network manager component. Alternatively, you can add a game object to your scene and give them a network start position component, which can be used by the spawning system. Non-player objects that can get spawned can also be set in the network manager spawn list. Additionally, the network manager component handles scene changes and provides debugging information. Related to the network manager component is the matchmaking functionality, which can be configured to match up players making them come together and start a game at the same time. 
a multiplayer lobby manager where players can set themselves as ready for the game to start, is among the other useful features. Good! In this video, we learned about multiplayer networking. Wow!